So from the time graph, we know that this point in common is at y equals 55 and on the way up because of the positive slope. As time passes, the y value increases. Now we can take that information that we know it's on the way up. We can take that information to the position graph as well. Uh, and we wanna figure out is the wave itself, is this curve on its way to the left or on its way to the right? So if we sketch out this curve, and we want this point to be on its way up. Would that happen if the wave is moving to the right or if the wave is moving to the left? To the left. Sorry, what was that? To the left. Yeah, if the, point, if the wave moves to the left, that means a crest has moved towards this point. So this point is gonna be shifting up as a result. So we know from the, from the point in common that this wave must be moving to the left as time passes. Can you repeat that cr the crest one you, you mentioned? Like yeah. yeah, one way to look at this also is that uh, if we want this point to move up, should we expect a crest or a trough to be moving towards it? Crest? Yeah, so we look for the nearest crest. We need, we need that crest to be moving towards the point of interest. Oh, uh, okay. And that means moving to the left. That way, as the nearby crest approaches this point, this point will shift up as the crest approaches it. Whereas okay. if the wave was moving to the right, then the nearest trough would be approaching this point. So the point would be sinking down as the trough approaches. Okay. But you can look at that in terms of uh, the shape of the wave and visualizing the shape sliding to the left or right. Or you can look at it in terms of should you expect the nearest crest or the nearest trough to be moving towards that point. Okay. Any other questions on that so far? I think I'm good. And then we can use that to figure out information about the uh, wave equation. For instance, now that we know the wave is moving to the left, what could we fill in in the wave equation based on that information? Moving to the left is gonna mean what in the equation? Positive sign. Yeah, we use a positive sign in that uh, plus instead of minus. And then we could measure the period from the time versus y graph, measure the wavelength from the x versus y graph, measure the amplitude from either one. And then uh, have you seen how to find the phase shift? if you wanted to actually know the value of phi there. For that one, well, first of all, can you find the period and wavelength of these graphs? Like for instance, for the X graph, what would be the length of one full cycle? Or can you pick two points that start and end a cycle? Would the period be six or? The period? Wait, no, never mind. sorry, I messed up. Well, if we're taking a look at the X graph, for instance, what would be a couple of convenient points that are definitely the beginning and end of a full cycle? Or even the beginning and end of some nice neat fraction of a cycle, like a half cycle or a quarter cycle? For example, I noticed that the graph is passing through equilibrium at two. Where's the next time or the next place it passes through equilibrium? 
Would it be at each crest? Uh, well, a crest is in equilibrium. We, we could measure from crest to crest if we had two crests, but it looks like there's, there's a crest at, it looks like about 11, and the next crest before that is somewhere before zero. So that's off the graph and we can't really use that. But we can see that the, uh, I guess it's kind of difficult to see in this scan of it, but the idea is that the, the equilibrium line, uh, I guess at about 35 is here. So at X equals two, the graph is passing through equilibrium. Where's the next location where the graph passes through equilibrium? At eight. Yeah. So from two to eight, that's uh, X difference of six, but what fraction of the cycle is that? If we're just going from equilibrium to a trough to equilibrium, what fraction of the cycle is that? Or how much further would we have to go to get one full cycle? If you take a look at this section from equilibrium to trough to equilibrium to crest to equilibrium, this is one full cycle because it starts at equilibrium on the way down and eventually ends at the next equilibrium on the way down. So this could be considered one full cycle that I've marked in green here because it starts and ends at the same kind of point. So we could say one full cycle is from two to 14. How far is that? Do you just subtract the x values? Yeah, we're just trying to find how far it is. So it'll be 12? Yeah. So we could say that the wavelength of this wave is 12. Presumably 12 meters or whatever the units are. Uh, alternatively, if the, like, let's say the graph only went to 10 or something, even if we can, can't get one full cycle, we could still take a look at this fraction of a cycle from two to eight, from equilibrium on the way down to equilibrium on the way up, that's exactly half of a cycle. So we could say that half of a wavelength is six from two to eight, then double it and get one full wavelength is 12. So it can often be useful to look at convenient fractions of a wavelength if you can't get a full wave. For example, in the time graph, we definitely don't even have a full period on the graph, but we can say, uh, for example, we're crossing equilibrium at one and crossing equilibrium again at four. But that's also exactly half of the cycle. From equilibrium on the way up to a crest, equilibrium on the way down. That's exactly half of a cycle. So we can say that half the period, t over two, is from one to four, that's three seconds. So what would the period have to be? Maybe six. Yeah. So we now know the wavelength, we know the period. We can fill those in on the graph. Period is six seconds, wavelength is 12 meters. Uh, also, what's the amplitude here? How far is it from equilibrium up to the highest point or from equilibrium down to the lowest point? Would it be 25? Yeah. 
because from 35 up to 60 is plus 25, from 35 down to 10 is minus 25. So the amplitude would be 25. Also, how do we account for the fact that the equilibrium is at, up at 35 instead of at zero? How would you cause the graph to shift up like that? Or what else do we need to include in the equation to account for that? Is it the phase constant? A uh, phase constant is something being added inside the function. So that's going to shift it horizontally. Oh. But what we want is a vertical shift. So how do you accomplish that? Because as it is right now, if we were to just graph this equation exactly as written, we get a, a, a sine wave oscillating above and below zero. But we want it, we don't want it to be centered at zero. We want to shift it up to be centered around 35 instead. How do you change an equation to make the graph shift up and down? Like if you just got some function and you graph it, but you want to take that equation or that, that graph and shift it up 35 spaces, how do you modify the equation to make the graph shift upwards 35 spaces? Yeah, like plus 35. Yeah, we just need a plus 35 outside the function. A plus, 30, plus or minus something inside the function would shift in the x or t direction, but plus or minus something outside the function shifts in the y direction because it's directly influencing the final value of y. Okay. So that plus 35 makes the center point, the asym or the, not the asymptote, the, the equilibrium location that everything's oscillating above and below at 35 instead of at zero. And at that point, we know everything except the phase shift. So how can we use these graphs to find the phase shift now that we've got everything else? In general, if you've got all the information about a graph or about a function except for one last unknown parameter, you can solve for that parameter as long as you fill in values of x, t, and y, because then phi would be the only variable left. Where can we get some values of x, t, and y to use? Could it be the ones you wrote on the graph, like the x equals 10 and t equals 2 and y equals 55? We could use those, but there's a slight problem with that one. Since this is at a point, in this case, 55, uh, that 55 there, shows up twice in that cycle. And so if you take a look at one full cycle of the graph, the problem is there's another location oh. on the other side of the crest that's also at y equals 55. Mm -hmm. So if we plug in this value and then solve, the algebra won't be able to tell the difference between those two locations. Okay. So is there any point in the cycle that only shows up once in each cycle instead of twice? That is, if we were to draw out a complete cycle. Would it be at either a trough or, or a crest that you would write those yeah, values? Yeah, exactly. In one complete cycle, the highest y value only shows up once and the lowest value only shows up once. Anything else, like if we chose this y value, there's two locations that have that y value. So there's some ambiguity there. But if you choose a crest or a trough, it only shows up once in each cycle. So we wanna use a crest or a trough to avoid the ambiguity. So is there a crest or a trough on either one of the graphs where we have coordinates for it.
or where we can estimate pretty well. And this could be a crest or a trough from either graph, as long as we've got coordinates for it. Like for example, this crest here, what are the, the X and T coordinates for that crest? X would be 11. Yeah, I think we can confidently say X is 11 because it's on the grid line. It's halfway between 10 and 12. So X is 11. And also what's the T value going to have to be? Two point five. I don't see any two point five associated with this. Graph. Oh, yeah. This entire graph is t equals two, right? Mm -hmm. Since the entire graph is at t equals two, we can take any point on this graph and say it's got some x value and also t equals two. Okay. And if we need it, we can also use y equals sixty, since that's the high point on the graph. So one way to do this would be to fill in eleven for everywhere we see x two for everywhere we see t, 60 for everywhere we see y, then phi is the only unknown left so we can solve algebraically for phi. But as a shortcut for that, if we just take a look at what's inside the sine function, the argument of the sine function, also called the total phase, the argument or the input of the sine function, uh, we know that t is 2, we know that x is 11, and we want this to be a high point. What does the input of the sine function have to be in order to get a high point as an output? That is, sine of what angle is going to give you the highest possible result? Yeah, pi over 2 should work. For any crest, we need sine of total phase to equal one. And one angle you could use as the total phase is pi over two, since sine of pi over two is one. That's not the only one you could use. You could also use five pi over two or nine pi over two or pi over two plus any whole number of two pi, any multiple of two pi. But the easiest way to do this, I think, would be to just use pi over two for the total phase. Then you can always add or subtract two pi as needed. Because two pi further on down the line or two pi further back would also be another crest. But let's set the total phase equal to pi over two since we're at a high point. So set this equal to pi over two, and then we can fill in uh, two for t and x, or 11 for x. So let's see what that's gonna give us. Replace t with two, replace x with 11. And now we've got an equation we can solve for phi. Any questions on that so far? And we can simplify a little bit. Two over six reduces to one third. So two pi over three plus, and then two over 12 reduces to 11 pi over six, which means we may as well leave the other one in sixth as well, because we're going to need to combine like terms anyway. Plus the unknown phase shift equals, and since everything else is in sixths, what's pi over two in sixths? I over two would be what over six?
How do you convert two to six? Would it be three pi? Yeah, we're just multiplying the denominator by three, so we need to multiply the numerator by three as well. That way everything's in six, so it's gonna be easier to combine. For instance, four pi plus 11 pi would be 15 pi over six. And then we could just subtract 15 pi over six from both sides. So three pi over six minus 15 pi over six would be 12 pi over six. However, what's 12 pi over six? What is that reduced to? Two pi. Right. And you can always add or subtract two pi from any angle and still get the same angle. So if you've got a phase shift that's two pi or larger, I would recommend subtracting two pi until it's smaller than two pi. Or if you get a, a phi value that's negative, add two pi until it becomes positive. So I would subtract two pi from this which means we'd really just get zero. So we can actually use zero as the phase shift here. Two pi would also work, but zero would be easier to deal with. So I would just use zero as the phase shift. Fill that in in the original equation. And this is now our uh, equation for the wave. And that, that equation contains all the information about the entire wave. We could now generate more graphs if we wanted to. Like if we wanted to find the time graph at x equals 15, we could just replace x with 15 and graph this y as a function of t. Or if we wanted to know what's the height at a certain time value at a certain position, we would fill in the x and t values and calculate y. And that tells us how high the wave is at that point at that time. Any other questions on that? or any other questions or anything else you'd like to work on. I don't know if it's possible, um, if we have enough time, but Mm -hmm. um, if you go over activity 8.4 in DL2, I kind of struggled, uh, my group and I like kind of struggled through it. Okay. I was wondering if there's um, maybe some shortcuts me. on how to draw graphs. Which one did you say it was? Um, activity 8.4 and DL2. Okay. Is this representing a harmonic wave graphically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you see it here? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what are you dealing with in this one? Or what questions did you have about the activity? Um, the one thing that I didn't really understand is how they were able to get a graph how how to get um, from the first graph to the second graph and then um, because it says that you you start with a certain graph and then now it's telling you that the maximum is at 2.25 centimeters 
um, it's the green dot. Just how, how do you go from, I guess, the first graph to the second graph? Uh, this one described in number three here? Yeah, yeah, it's similar that, mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe I have the older DL version, but yes, it's number three. Okay. On yours. Yeah, this is an older copy, I think. Uh, so we have a graph of position versus height at one single time, time zero seconds. But we want to figure out what's going on with one, we want to create a new graph. It's a graph of time versus y at a single location, specifically at the location marked with this green dot here. So at location 2.25. So let's sketch out the axes. We'll want a y-axis and a time axis. So time and height or displacement. And do we have the period and or frequency of this wave? Was that given information? Looks like it does tell us the frequency, right? Frequency is two Hertz. So what's the period? Point five. Sorry, what was that? Point five period. Yeah, half a second. Uh, since period is just the inverse of frequency, two cycles per second, so half a second per cycle. <clears throat> uh, so we that means that it's going to take half a second for one full cycle of the of the wave. And we also know some information about time zero seconds. Specifically, we know at time zero seconds, and specifically if we want to know the location, x equals 2.25 centimeters. At time zero seconds, what's that location doing? Or how high is that location? On top of the crest. Right, that's at a crest. We know from this graph, specifically from that green dot, we know that at time equals zero seconds, the location x equals 2.25 centimeters is at a crest. So that means we can mark that crest at time zero on our graph. We know we've got a crest at time zero. And specifically that should be at a height of one, I guess, since that's the amplitude. So one up and also one below. So let's mark that one and negative one. So we know that we're at a crest, that is at y equals one at time zero. And also we should be back at a crest how much time later? Uh. Point five second half later. Right, because we know that the period is half a second. If we started a crest, then exactly one period later, we'll be back up at the next crest. So if we mark half a second here, half a second, we should be back at a crest. So we know we can mark a crest again at half a second. And then to fill in the in-between, uh, what should be happening exactly halfway between two crests? Half of the period. And what's half of the period after a crest? A trough. Right. So if we go to the exact halfway mark, halfway between zero and one half would be one fourth. That means at one fourth, we should expect a trough. So we can fill in a low point, negative one, at t equals one fourth of a second. And likewise, at the halfway marks between those, we should expect equilibrium. So halfway between zero and one fourth, we're passing through equilibrium on the way down. Halfway between one fourth and one half, we're passing through equilibrium on the way up. 
So a quick sketch of the graph should look something like this. Flat at the high points and low points and steepest as possible as it goes through equilibrium. And then that pattern is just gonna repeat itself over the next half second and the next half second and so on. Any other well, questions on that graph? Uh, no, that makes a lot more sense on how you got all those values. Um, yeah, as long as you can find one sort of anchor point based on the information provided in the given graph, uh, then you can go one full cycle away from that uh, to get the next point of that same type. And then keep going a few more times if you need to fill in more of the graph then fill in the in-between points by looking at what's exactly halfway between those two points and halfway between those. As long as you can mark all the crests, troughs, equilibrium on the way up and equilibrium on the way down, then it's pretty straightforward to sketch out the rest of the curve to match those. Gotcha, thank you. You're welcome. And if you wanna get some more practice on that, if you go to math.nchoose.org slash p7c, uh, there's a practice final, and the first question on the practice final is a very similar sort of situation where you have a time graph and a position graph, and you're trying to use that information to draw another time graph at a different position and another position graph at a different time. So you might try that to get some extra practice. Casey, can you post that link in the chat? Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and type that in. Thank you math.mchoose.org slash p7c. And if you scroll down, there should be a practice final. And the first problem, the first page of that practice final is a similar sort of setup. In the practice final, right? Yeah. Okay. And most of the rest of the stuff on the practice final is stuff you won't see until later, but that first page at least should be doable. Okay, gotcha. Any other questions? Do you say that the first uh, first page so far should be doable to all of us? I think so, yeah. The first page is, is just a, a problem, one long problem about uh, two ducks bobbing up and down on a river. Mm -hmm. So that's all about graphing waves. Gotcha. Do you have any general like step-by-step -step solution for graphing? Like what step one, what do we need to do? Uh, I think I do have a solution written up for that practice final on the same the same page. Gotcha. Okay. So you can take a look at that as well if you need some hints on it. Nice. All right. And also, if you take a look back at the older workshop recordings, there are several going over similar topics as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before I go? Uh, can you repeat your schedule for this review session too? For... For this, for this, uh, the workshops, yeah, this workshop, mm -hmm. yeah, 3 10 to 4 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday, and, Thursday? yeah, and you can find the links and schedule on math.nchoose.org as well. Okay. Um, Tuesday and Thursday, 3 10 to 4. Four. All right, uh, well, email me or send me a message on Discord if you have any other questions, and I will see you next time. Thank you. You're welcome.